Yo, what's up guys? Bill here, Classic Rock and Metal Review. Time for a Black Sabbath update, February 2024. I think it's been three months since we did this. I don't think there was one in December, definitely not January. I think we have to go back to November. Three months, and you know what? Actually kind of slow on the news front, but we'll get to what's worth talking about. Latest, best band ever news, all right? Give you my final word on geezer's book which i finished shortly after the last update so i had been giving you sort of my take on whatever chapters i had read during these sabbath updates 2023 so i finished this right after our last update so just give you my final word on the book in general also latest commercial and bootleg releases uh, nothing really new material wise in either case only really the one commercial release but always fun to talk about those. I think there's about a dozen bootleg releases, Ozzy and Sabbath, mostly just represses and stuff like that. Give it to you anyway. I'm gonna show you my latest two Sabbath bootleg pickups. Some pretty cool stuff. Probably be a little surprised, but I'll explain when we get to it. Two, a double CD and a double DVD, believe it or not. Finally, for Chris Allo, but really it was a great idea to do this obviously love Sabbath and obviously love bootleg. So what better than to combine the two and give you guys a comprehensive list, mandatory Black Sabbath bootlegs. Not to be, not to forget our audience tape friends. All right, there's a lot of people out there that actually prefer audience tapes a lot of the times. Not me these days. You know, 25 years ago, it's all you pretty much had. This. You know, nowadays, man, so much great soundboard stuff. I really don't even need the audience stuff. But you know what? I got a little, I have a half dozen sort of second tier items to go to go after. Point is in the right direction on those. And then another handful of honorable mentions in the audience section, I guess you'd call it. So, so next month, I'll get to another round of these, but there's going to be at least three. Today, we're just gonna cover the original Ozzy era, 1969 up to 1978. Nine mandatory titles, tell you to go get, just covering that era alone. There's gonna be another 10 or 12, just between 1980 and 83. A lot more material available at that point. And then when we get to 83 and beyond, there's gonna be another 10 or 12. So to do it right, as you can see how long this episode's already gonna be. Right, so I didn't want an hour and a half episode. Let's keep it at what I have prepared today. We'll cover 69 to 78. And I think that about covers what's gonna be on the show, except for the fact that I need something to drink. I'm ready for a drink tonight. I don't know about you. Let's just sort of recalibrate with a nice Stella, back off the IPAs for a minute here. Stella never does you wrong. Never does me wrong. Let's see if I can get this thing cleanly off. A little paper strip there. And we're going to mug up in honor of Muggo. I'll explain that one later. Here comes the uh, pour. Looking all right. You know, I don't have that IPA uh, freshness to deal with that can foam you out. You know what? That's just about drinkable. What do you think? Little cheap logo plug there. Like this glass. Got this for Christmas. Oh man, that looks so good. I'm gonna let that foam get off there so I'm not wearing that shit. Oh, speaking of wearing, finally putting this on for the first time. This awesome knockoff, you know, mall. I don't even know. I guess it was a parking lot shirt at one time too. Got this bad boy, I don't know, what, a couple months ago. I showed it to you the last Sabbath update. Finally wearing it for the first time. It's awesome. And man, this was my first rock shirt of any kind. And I I admit, I didn't even own any Sabbath at the time. I don't think I even owned it. I don't think I even owned an album. Bought this in like the fall of 81, September or something like that. October maybe. I didn't buy an album. I didn't buy a record album until the end of the year. It was the last week of the year. That's how I remember that. 
But anyway, here's me wearing that shirt on my 13th birthday, which was about a year and a half later in the spring of 83. Getting my brand new birthday Aussie shirt while wearing the original John of this. The shirt rules. I rule. Which also reminds me, by the way, I was thinking back to this picture. My sister, I guess only like not even six months later, was had a Bark at the Moon shirt from the same t-shirt world at Woodhaven Mall where I used to, where I grew up. Anyway, old shirts, man. They're awesome. You know, fetching 700 hours and stuff nowadays. Crazy. God damn, that's delicious. All right, let's start off. Sabbath news. First of all, happy 54th birthday to Adam that kicked it all off. What a great friggin' record. February 13th, 1970. I was just about hanging around then. Not quite, but almost. What a great record. Let's just get a full appreciation for that awesome cover. This is out of the, uh, I call it the Monomania box set. So, pretty sure this is a pretty much reproduction of the original album, inside and all. Pretty damn cool. You guys have seen this before. Let me just see what's on the inside here. Uh, you got sort of a story of the uh, record, I guess. I never even read this thing. But that's not original, obviously. But man... You know, just what a great album. Now, I don't know. What did you guys rank, rank this thing, man? I'll tell you where I... This album, at one point, was my favorite Sabbath album. I would say Volume 4 and this one were my favorite two Sabbath albums for years. Up until about maybe 12 or 15 years ago. And started playing Never Say Die all the time. To where, I don't know maybe at some point just a couple years ago, five years ago or so, I'm just like, damn, I have to just consider Never Say Die my favorite Sabbath app. I'm playing it all the damn time. And I still do. It's the one I play the most. That's been at least 12 years now. So, however, debut, still in my top three. I would say it's Never Say Die, volume four, and the debut. Debut's always been in my top three Sabbath albums. You know, Once I was able to make that call, owning the whole original eight albums. Just love that damn record. You know what? It's winter time until May around these parts where I live. So I don't know about you guys, but I would actually love some of this new stuff that the band's store has. Official merchandise Black Sabbath store. I mean, you know, it might seem corny. I know it's a little kiss-like, right? I mean, what's next? The coffin? But this 500 piece puzzle actually looks cool. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, man. I think I might buy this. I don't know, not immediately, but at some point. And you know what? I think this umbrella is cool as hell too. I don't know, man. Sometimes you just love something so much, it doesn't matter what it's on. But anyway, I think those things are kind of cool. And by the way, we're gonna be talking about some fantastic first album and paranoid versions of those songs on some of these bootlegs coming up at, later in the show. Uh, sometime late November, again, right after I, we did the last update, watching Monday Night Football. Earlier in the year, I think September or so, I heard the live version of Paranoid on the way out to a commercial with Dio singing on Monday Night Football. So, late November, I heard Heaven and Hell. I don't know if any of you guys caught that. Studio version. It was actually the very beginning of the song. And it faded to commercial before Dio started singing. But that was just cool hearing that. I know that's a stupid thing to mention, but I just got to mention that, man. What, they got a contract with Monday Night Football or something? All right, Geezer's book. Uh, I think I had about 50 pages to go, maybe 60 pages to go the last time we talked about this. So, knock that out really damn quick. Like I mentioned, I had been focusing on key points along the way reading this book. Go back to the Sabbath episodes from summer up until November. So this, uh, I have to say, the ending of the book, it really just covers like the reunion period, 
you know, mid to late 90s on up to present day. So I think for that reason, because I, you know, lived through all that era, freshly remember all that stuff. So nothing was really any, anything revelatory that section of the book. Nothing really out of the blue. I don't really have anything to point out with the ending. But a final overview of it, a really good recount of the whole career of Geezer. Interesting hearing each individual guy's account of the band. You know, I read Iron Man about five or six years ago. Uh, it's a quick, easy read. I think I read this entire book in like five or six sittings. You know, there were 40... 60 page chunks at a time. It just seemed to fly by, to be honest with you. Highly recommend it, you know. Much like Geezer himself, if you've watched any sort of interviews with him in the past 20, 30 years, or really ever, he's a straight shooter, like I said. Keeps it to, keeps things on point and on topic. No need for embellishments. Just tells it and moves on. I have to say, I think I probably, if I had one criticism of the book, would have liked a little more focus on the heyday of Sabbath. He spends as much time on seemingly each and every year, pre-Sabbath and post-Sabbath, as he does talking about Sabbath. So, in my opinion, some of him getting to main points quickly, on the one hand, it makes it such an easy read, but on the other hand, you feel like you want more when it's over, you know? So, anyway. It was a great read. I guess when you're someone like me, you just can't get enough Sabbath, so you never want these kind of books to end. So there's an audiobook option out there, and I believe Geezer's the reader. So that would be cool. You know, if I didn't already read this, I'd probably buy that. That would be awesome. Road trip. You know, that would be great road trip material. So anyway, great book by Geezer Butler, Into the Void, From Birth to Black Sabbath and Beyond. And I guess his childhood and upbringing was a really interesting part of the book. So, great one there. All right, something else in the news. Ozzy, he's a nominee for the 2024 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame class. It was just announced a few weeks ago for his solo career, obviously. Black Sabbath was inducted in 2006. They went into the UK Hall of Fame in 2005. There were some... That was a good concert, right? Metallica did the tribute. Guys, let's devote as much time to this topic as it deserves. I mean, we have to pause and discuss the significance of this. All right, next topic. Ozzy's farewell gigs. Sounds like it's in the works, hopefully. Jaron was suggesting, I think, on their podcast that Ozzy wants to do a couple of shows as a send-off. And he's said as much, so. Possibly, though, name and location, Villa Park, 42,000-seat stadium, Ozzy's hometown, Aston, Birmingham. I'm not sure what the capacity for a concert would be. For football, it holds 42,600, so it might be a little less. I'm not really sure. I saw that the Foo Fighters were playing there this June, in the past, Bruce Springsteen's played there. So it's a legit concert facility. Looking for one, possibly two shows. Send Ozzy off. So I like the sounds of this myself, you know. I think just having a final tour announced and then just canceled, that's no way to go out. So, you know, I'm sure it's going to help him out financially and stuff like that. But you know what? Who cares? Let him make all the money he wants. And he really does need to go out with some sort of final show, in my opinion. I don't care if he's up there, you know, on stilts or whatever. <laughs> Not stilts, you know, crutches or something. Which isn't funny, but <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> oh, shit. Hopefully something comes together. And you know what? I mean, even if I could get there, I mean, I guess if I had all the money in the world, I'd try to get there. But I don't. And you know what? I only saw Ozzy once, you know, 40 years ago. So let's just leave it at that at this point, all right? But, man, I, I wish him well. I hope that I hope that goes off for a stadium full of fans. That's a way to go out. All right, next up, some new releases, right? There's only one official thing to talk about, so let's get to that. The Hand of Doom 1970 to 1978 box set. These were picture discs. A numbered box, and I think the number was 4,000. Now, 
Let me tell you, it's listed for $250 on Rhino. And they just had a little President's Day sale going on. It was $215. So they do run sales here and there. Do not pay what these idiots on eBay and such are asking. $400, $500, $600. Head right to the source and save some money. Bootlegs. There's a dozen of them. Like I said, no new material. But always fun to talk about them. What do we got up first? Uh, some of these are back in print. Some of them are upgrades. Different labels, versions of other labels kind of things. So, now, audience tapes. Guys, mark this day down. What is it? I think it's February 21st, all right, when I'm recording this. I'm actually considering going down the rabbit hole of audience tapes. Now, why? Well, for Sabbath, anyway. Because I have all the soundboards there are to have. I'll be showing you the last one that I, that I needed to get. I got it, and I'll show you at the end of the show. So, I know I only talk soundboards here, but I actually started out listening to mostly audience tapes. So, I can handle it, you know. And at this point, like I said, have every soundboard that I know of. So, time to move on. And a couple of these in this update are some interesting looking ones. All right, so let's get started. Return to 1969. Element of Crime is the label. This is an audience recording one CD purported to be from Plumpton Racecourse in England, which was, there was a jazz festival going on that weekend. There's a Floyd title from, I think, the day before. It's supposed to be August 9th, 1969, which would make it the oldest known Sabbath bootleg out there. And I almost bought this once because of this date on here. But it is actually, the recording is actually from Berlin from June 26, 1970. So, you know what, though, I have to admit, this would be cool to have just to have, all right? This is some cool, I love this cool, simple artwork. Kind of reminds me of that inside sleeve of, of the first album, you know, which is I'm sure where they got the inspiration. However, like I said, this is not a 1969 August recording. That would have been awesome. But it is out there if you want it as a collectible audience recording and not an awesome one either. I think I heard a little of this before. Number two, Dayton, 1972, 50th anniversary. A couple of these guys came out in the last year or two, but since I was ignoring a lot of audience stuff at the time, and now I'm floating it around in my head, let's talk a little bit about it. Dayton, 50th anniversary. One CD is, like I said, an audience recording on Zodiac. We're at Hara Arena, Dayton, Ohio. July 15th, 1972, supposed to be an upgrade over previous versions. Likewise with title number three, Brescia, 1973, 50th anniversary, single CD audience recording, Zodiac the label again, EIB Palazzo location for this. We're in Italy. It's February 21st, 1973. Another upgrade. The set list on this one looks exactly like the Live at Last set list. I think that Dayton, that looks like the cooler of the two, Dayton. Number four, Sabbath, Wicked Sabbath, Gypsy Eyes, the label. It's their version of the California Jam from April 6th of 1974, single CD. Ozzy, Taunton, 1980. Zodiac is the label on this one. Audience recording from October 10th, 1980. So early in that first tour. Taunton, Odeon Theater, a nice early tour gig here. Audience, like I said. Ozzy, Complete Legacy, Shout to the Top, famous Montreal, Quebec show from July 28th of 81 with Randy. St. Denis Theatre, three bonus tracks from Towson, Maryland. I believe they are audience bonus tracks. Otherwise, this should be, although it doesn't state it anywhere as far as I remember, uh, that this is a soundboard show. Another soundboard title, this one, non-label. This actually looks like RZ doing one of their cheapy little slimline CDR jobs on an otherwise previously released title. Seven star instrumental demos. Ten instrumentals that would be on the 86 album. Eight jams, so a total of 18 songs. You know what, for 10 bucks, this is a cool little pickup. Not sure how much I would love hearing seven star as just instrumentals, but I have to tell you, there are a couple of songs, some recent CDs I've been checking out, bootlegs, did some reviews on some of them. And I have another one coming up next. 
where the instrumental versions of songs are actually maybe better than the songs with vocals. So you know what? This is not something. I might pick this up myself. Even though I'm not a huge Seven Star fan, it is a pretty good app. And along the same lines, another title for you, Definitive Cleveland 1986, Zodiac, two CDs, Audience Recording. This is the first show of the tour, so Glenn Hughes' first gig as the vocalist. Cleveland Public Hall, March 21st, 1986. You can get with this one a bonus DVD-R of Glenn's second show the following night in Detroit's Cobo Hall. Audience shot DVD-R from March 22nd of 86. This tour infamous for Glenn's drug use just being out of control. Subsequent broken nose after a fight. I think it was with a roadie. On just unable to sing. So here's your evidence right here. Exhibit A, exhibits A and B. An audio, CD, bonus DVD R. I think he lasted five shows on that tour. All right, Definitive Boston, 1992, pre-FM Master. I think this came out like a year or two ago, all right? It's on Zodiac, so I'm not sure why I even have it in this list, honestly. Although it came up as a new release on one of the sites. August 9th, 1992, very famous Boston show. It was broadcast on FM, obviously, with that title. And I actually have it, so that just goes to show you. I don't know if it's back in print or maybe one of the sites just got it back in stock. That could have been what happened. Now this is the second release of this. The original was just called, I think, Definitive Boston. It wasn't called quote unquote pre-FM Master like this one. It's all the same show. Some of them do have a bonus DVD-R of Sabbath Live at the Beacon Theater in New York from October 14th. It's an audience shot uh, recording, but it looks pretty good. I checked out a few songs on uh, YouTube. First Purposes, Bondage Music. We're live at The Sting in New Britain, Connecticut for the first show of the Cross Purposes Tour. It's two CDs, October 8th of 94. Tony Martin and Geezer on this one. Although the uh, title that I have on Zodiac, you can't hear Geezer at all. It's crazy. I don't know how you want to at least have some bass bleed through on some of these mics or whatever. So I guess we're straight off the board picking up nothing from the room on this one. It's an awesome sounding show, though. It's a shame Geezer's not heard on it. Number 11, I just I never heard of this title before. I think it's from 2018. Ozzy Gasha Decoro on the Shakuntala label. Two CDs, audience recording from Fukuoka Sun Palace from March 10th of 1996. And checking out the set list on these two CDs, minimal material from 89 to 96. It's almost all old Ozzy and Sabbath. So an interesting set list here. And finally, lastly, Return of Four. This is another RZ cheapie where they just throw a slimline case CDR package together here. Audience recording, one CD from Birmingham Academy from May 22nd, 2001. Jeff Nichols is here and the original four Sabbath members. 12 songs including Under the Sun, Cornucopia, and the live debut of Scary Dreams. A song only ever played live, never released, uh, purportedly from the reunion sessions, although they didn't start playing it until 2001. So not sure if they came up with came up with the song around 2001, 98, 99, not really sure. But it was only played a handful of times live ever. This would be the debut. So that'll do it for the two for the 12 latest bootleg editions. Let's get to our all out list mandatory stuff by Sabbath in the bootleg market. First of all, six honorable mentions before we get to the mandatory nine titles. Guys, these are a mix of bootlegs, gray market releases, and recently, some of them recently released official releases on super deluxe editions. So just, you got some options here, all right? It's not as clear cut as it was. 10 years ago, these were all bootlegs. Now we have the Amazon legal bootleg market. Let's just call it what it is. All right, eBay has that shit too. We have bootlegs still, and then like I said, we have deluxe editions given us some of this material. So six honorable mentions before we get into the mandatory nine titles. 1969 demos, all right? The Rebel and When I Came Down. There's no one specific bootleg I can point you towards for that. There's four options that I know of just right off the top of my head. First of all, there's one that I picked up back 
I guess 2014, called The Rebel. It just came out. It was on eBay. There was, you know, copies floating around for months, maybe, I don't know, a year. So I grabbed one because I wanted a physical copy of this thing. This is probably when I really started getting into the bootleg collecting. No, not even really completely at this point, but I couldn't pass this one up. You had blue suede shoes, the rebel when I came down. And some other total bullshit, it's not even Sabbath. People were trying to, maybe they just made a mistake or just trying to pass it off. Uh, we do have a couple of interesting other tracks, but this one's become hard to find, believe it or not. No label on this one. You know, copyright, blah, 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 2013. It says Muse Incorporated. I don't know, whatever. It's a horseshit non-label. But I was kind of surprised to see on the inside. I remember it was really cheap, but I thought it was just on a plain ass, you know, CDR. But it is actually on a, you know, some got some kind of printed on, printing on it. Although it looks like it's just stuck on there, you know, one of those jobs. Kind of a cool uh, little cemetery scene in the back there. So they actually call it Earth, the Rebel. So there's another version out there just called 1969 Demos, literally what it says. Also around the same time, 2014. Now, the Silver Press CD that's out there, Godfather label, Masters of Black Masses, Sheffield 1971 audience, Hollywood Bowl 72 audience, bonus tracks on a Silver Press CD are these two songs, The Rebel and When I Came Down. All right, so that's one way to go if you want a silver press bootleg with those songs on it. Uh, another one that was out there by Shades CDR was LA Forum 1971, audience with bonus tracks. Now Zodiac put their own LA For Forum 71 CD out there. That's a silver press CD, but it doesn't have the bonus tracks of those two demos. So find yourself the 1969 demos. Just gave you a couple options. Um, whatever you need to do. Originally, I just had them downloaded off the internet, but they're so cool. You need to have a physical copy of those. Number two, Dumfries, Scotland, November 16th, 1969, the oldest known show on tape by the band. And we're about a month after the recording of the album, right? Almost exactly a month. Audience tape and a good one, if not a great one. And you got a bunch of cover songs in here, which yeah, I guess for curiosity's sake, that's kind of cool. But really, I think the highlight of this is Song for Jim. Song that they, it sounds like they recorded this in the studio also. That has not seen the light of day yet, though. And who knows if we ever will ever see that one. Now, this is just a cheap cover I printed offline myself. It's on a downloaded the show off the internet, so I don't own it. However, Zodiac did release this back back in 2014 or so. And it was just called Dumfries 1969 Silver Press CD. And also at the time it came with a bonus CDR of Bill and Tony's first band called Mythology. Their only gig that was recorded apparently was their very last gig in 1968. Now I happen to have a copy of that that I got off RZ not too long ago. Similar cover. This is apparently the only picture the band ever took. It's the only one you ever see. So track down Zodiac's version of Dumfries, 1969. Brussels, Belgium. October of 70 for sure, all right? Now this was the sound from the concert video that aired December 20th, 1970. They happened to be playing in Paris that night. And for some reason, the big sort of misnomer here is that this show is from that date. So a lot of people don't realize it was recorded in Brussels. So we know about the video, that's the story there. And this is the audio from it, which we get in the uh, Paranoid Super Deluxe Edition. So, you know, I look at this more as something that you need to have the video of. I don't really listen to this a whole lot. I even had it on another different bootleg before this came out, something called Come to the Sabbath. But this version on here sounds better. So this is your best version of this. Like I said, these are honorable mentions. It's a great show, it's awesome. I just prefer it more as video. I had the video back in the late 80s, 88, 89, something like that. So 
when this came out or when I even ran across it on bootleg in audio form it's kind of fun to have but I probably listened to it twice you know I really prefer to just watch it if I'm gonna to listen to it might as well watch it happen that's how I look at it so no need for a boot if you have paranoid super deluxe edition man this was like 33 bucks when this came out you just got to grab these things when they come out for $30 You're kidding me all right on to number four I know you're gonna be like this isn't really a bootleg no but you know what it it kind of is the first Sabbath bootleg a lot of us had was live at last released against their will zero studio touch-ups after the fact just a raw Sabbath concert so show some respect to this original bootleg you know and look at all the look at all the good that's come of it being released against their will first of all you had this back when you had nothing else by the band all right then we end up getting past lives sounded a little better not a whole lot different then we get the super deluxe edition for volume four and we get the expanded version of live at last so obviously your your volume four super deluxe edition is the way to go to get the best experience with live at last they put the songs back in the correct running order from the show putting the between song banter and ozzy talking some other just general noise going on on stage and I think three of the songs on there are alternate versions compared to what was on the original. We have 12 more minutes to this same exact set list. So there you go. You have to have the Super Deluxe Edition of that one. Not really a true bootleg, but you know, a rarity, not your basic release by Sabbath, not at all. All right, number five, Long Beach 1975. Mike Millard recording. This one's from September 7th. So roughly a month after the famous Asbury Park recording, where Long Beach Arena, Mike was a legendary taper of concerts. He taped hundreds of shows from the 70s on up through the 90s, as far as I know. I don't have this recording. I only heard a few songs the other day on, online. Yeah, it sounds really good. It is, though, just an audience recording. A great one, for sure. But it's the same exact set list as Asbury Park. So, you know, which am I going to pick? The great sounding one or the good sounding one? So I haven't felt a need for this. However, at some point, I think I'm going to have to just track this down. I think Zodiac released this in 2020. They released an updated version of it again in 2023. So there you go. If you need bonus Sabbath beyond our nine mandatories, this would be a good place to go. And last but not least, there's audio out there from the Hammersmith 78 video, May 19th, 1978. And this is one I just came across at a record store. It was 10 or 12 bucks, so I picked it up. Again, just like the Brussels, I'm gonna watch it. If I wanna listen to this, I might as well throw it on the TV and watch it. Welcome to the Electric Funerals, the title on this guy. And what's this? Alternative Edge Productions, AEP for short. I haven't seen them do any other bootlegs. I'm sure they've done something else. But here you go. And it's straight up audio from the video. And that's that. So that's why these are sort of bonus things, not mandatory things in my eyes. So let's get to our nine mandatory Black Sabbath bootlegs. First mandatory title is actually two different performances, but they're both pretty closely related. In a lot of ways. John Peel's BBC Sunday Show. This took place April 26, 1970. Band recorded four songs to go out over the BBC. And also Beat Club. Two different performances for German TV recorded in Bremen, Germany. So these eight songs, you can actually get them both together. It's kind of cool. Talk, talk about that in a second. Show you how I have them though. The John Peel Sunday Show material is on Ozzy's Ozman Comet. 1995, I think this guy is. And you need the two CD version. CD one has Black Sabbath and Walpurgis, which he just writes War Pigs on here, but it's actually the original Walpurgis. And disc two has Fairies Wear Boots and Behind the Wall of Sleep. All right, so that's one way to get them. Got some dated production on this by now. However, I haven't heard these other versions I'm about to tell you about, though. So, they sound pretty good, you know. 
They're not basement tapes, like I think Ozzy writes on the inside here, describing those. And then the Beat Club material, four songs from there. I happen, happen to have them on this Black Mass. This was a UK product. It's actually the four songs from Beat Club. Like I said, they were two different appearances. And this actually plays in your computer if you want to watch the rare four-track movie of Black Sabbath. So I don't think I've ever even tried doing that because I have them on video. So you can get both of these. So all eight songs on a couple of different products. One that was out in 2019 CD called Walpurgis Peel Session and Beat Club TV 1970. And I've seen another newer one just pop up pretty recently called On Air 1970. Same eight songs. These are both gray market releases. Uh, eBay has them both for sure. I think Amazon has at least the one, if not the both of them. And they're not too bad. I think 15, 20 bucks you can get these. So that's a great way to get both of those shows. I actually want to pick up one of those myself. Just to get all eight songs on the same CD. And you really only have the song Black Sabbath repeat. So seven different songs out of the eight. So that's a cool one. Check that out. The versions of the uh, Sunday show versions are really cool. You get the nine minute. Black Sabbath. You get the Walpurgis version of War Pigs. Behind the Wall of Sleep. I think it's Behind the Wall of Sleep has this jazzier ending and it's kind of cool. Fairies Wear Boots is good. Beat Club. You got the only performance of Blue Suede Shoes which is awesome. Black Sabbath, the shorter version. Paranoid is on there and Iron Man's on there. And that's a really great version of Iron Man by the way. So there's your number one mandatory title. Grab either the Walpurgis Peel Session and B-Club CD or more recently, there's a lot more copies of this out there now, On Air 1970, same eight songs. Second title you need, believe it or not, is an audience recording. Now this guy got this one off Amazon a couple years ago. It's on the Top Gear label, live in Luzon. Luzon, Switzerland, a couple days after that BBC Sunday show, April 29th, 1970. An audience recording, it sounds like they're playing in my living room. I mean, the clapping is by like four or five people in between songs. The sound's excellent. I mean, how many ways do I have to tell you? This is mandatory. They're in a small club called the Electric Circus, the Walpurgis version of War Pigs. Even though this, you know, they recorded the Black Sabbath, what, six months ago now? They still are doing the third verse, nine and a half minute Black Sabbath at the end of April. Sleeping Village is on here, and a 32-minute warning. Iami goes off most of it, but I think there's a one or two spots where Ward gets a solo, Geezer even gets a couple brief solos during this song. It's just a mega version of Warning that knocks your socks off. All right. Unlike Dumfries '69, where there's you know a bunch of covers, there's only one cover song on this one. Great title. This is a really cool little presentation. This was like 25 bucks. It wasn't uh, too cheap, but there's some different versions out there. There's one that's just called, I think, Lausanne 1970 or something or other on eBay and I think Amazon. I'm sure that sounds just as good. It's the same set list and all. So in my opinion, the coolest of all the Black Sabbath bootlegs might be that Live in Lausanne. As far as classic old stuff, I think it beats Brussels, beats quite a few outs, uh, quite a few other titles out for sure. A must have, all right? And it's rare and it's a must for sure. Sound and on there is great and the show itself is, a, is just, you have to have it. All right, number three, Montreux, Switzerland, August 31st, 1970, the Montreux Casino. Excellent sound on this one and this also came from the Super Deluxe Edition of Paranoid. We got a, a version on there. Now the version on here, 47 and a half minutes, solid, great sound and show, no matter how you slice it. But I actually went and picked up this Zodiac title a year or two ago, because I love this show so much. And it, they said it was four minutes longer. Well, I have to tell you, it's the same songs. The four minutes is really just between, you know, between song stuff, after song stuff. So there's no new material, which I knew that going in, but what I didn't know going in was I'm not really a big fan of this sound quality on here. It's 
this is kind of an ass backwards situation. The official release sounds more like a bootleg to me, and this sounds more like what you would think an official release would sound like. In other words, the Zodiac title sounds kind of smoothed out, it feels produced, and it kind of loses a little bit of the live feel, all right? Loses some of the dynamics of the instruments. And I don't know, it's almost like you remember the Dolby days with your cassettes? It's almost like someone hit the Dolby noise reduction on this guy. And you lose the clarity of the instruments on here, you know? So all three instruments, to me, sound a little duller than they do on the Super Deluxe Edition. So I feel like, in this case, for sure, the band gave us the best edition out here. Their production on here was, was better than the bootlegs. It's usually not the case, as, as you'll see as we go along here. You know, four more minutes is great, but it's really not any more music. So in this case, you know, I'm not going to throw this out or anything. It's kind of cool to have it as a standalone disc. Just grab on the way out the door. But I got to give it to the official release on this one. Black Sabbath official version of Montro sounds better to me. Clearer in all, all areas instrumentally for sure. So screw those four minutes. Although it's cool hearing Bill Ward pounding on a hammer a couple different times during the show trying to get his uh, bass pedal situation literally nailed down. You know what? It is actually kind of cool having two different versions of the same show. All right, on to California Jam. I've been talking to you about this lately because I just listened to it. Finished it up yesterday. Whole neighborhood got a dose of the second half of this. Cal Jam, the way to go with this is there's only one way to go. The new reel-to-reel -reel soundboard that just came out, I think, last year. Ontario Motor Speedway. Since the early 90s, man, all the boots that I've had, going back to the early 90s, sound very thin, hear no bass. You hear Ozzy, but, you know, not that great. You can hear the guitar best of all. So what's new with our reel-to-reel -reel soundboard? So the reel-to-reel -reel recordings of these were found a year or so ago. And for most bands that were at this show, reel-to-reel -reel tapes have, or bootlegs have come out. Deep Purple, Earth, Wind and & Fire, and Sabbath. And it's a vast improvement. Now, I might have been telling you a little bit of the wrong thing about this before. That, you know, Geezer still wasn't heard very well, and that's kind of true, but he's definitely heard a little bit better than he was on previous releases. Ozzy sounds better and a little higher up there for sure. Iomi also sounds clearer and crisper and a little louder. And he was already loud, but it's like all the levels came up. Geezer maybe a little bit, but a little is better than zero. But I think the most improved thing on here is Bill Ward. The sound of his drums, now you hear the whole kit pretty darn good. So it's, it's definitely an improvement and definitely the only way to go when you're buying Cal Jam. Reel-to-reel -reel soundboard out on Zodiac, I think about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. So that's the only one, your only option to get with this guy. All right, moving on to, this is actually a needle drop. Volume 4, UK original Vertigo vinyl. LP needle drop to a CDR. Now, there's no silver CD option. So, trust me on this. It's only about 10 bucks anyway. Get yourself the CDR, a volume four needle drop. So what I did with mine, this is my 80s CD. I just took it out of the single case and put it into a double CD case. And now when you open it up, you're opening it up to the original Vertigo needle drop with the little tray card that they gave you you know, still got my original 80 CD cover in there too. And then just flip it open and behind it, behind that is the original CD. Just nice way to store it. When I want to hear volume four, it blows away this 80 CD. It's noticeably better than the box set that just came out, the volume four super deluxe. It's also better than 2016 pressings and they were really good too. By far, easily the best sounding version of this album. And you know what? I actually got a spare copy to give away. When I gave stuff away last summer, this is the only thing that went unclaimed. Guy who won it never contacted me. So 
Someone's going to get this eventually, so hang on to your hat. Next up, Asbury Park, New Jersey. You knew it was coming. So interesting story with this. Urban legend, at least I remember reading this like 10, 15 years ago. The story goes that, that this show was broadcast back in 75, 76, something like that. And somebody wrote the King Biscuit or whoever, one of the broadcasters, I don't know if it was Westwood One or whoever, and asking them about this concert. And supposedly they wrote the guy back and said, we actually need some help naming some of these songs. We're not even sure what some of these song titles are. And they sent him a copy of the broadcast. And that's how this got out in the first place. That's a pretty cool story. I don't know if it's true or not, but I love it. Anyway, in 2012, we got the legendary soundboard tapes. They made their way onto the internet. That's the first place I had this, downloaded. There was a CDR of an edited version called the Broadcast Edition. I don't, I've never met anyone that said they remembered this being on the radio, but it sounds like it. that's what it was recorded for, so I'm, I'm assuming it was. In 2018, we got a Zodiac version called Live Longest Diet Last. Play on words from the original Live at Last album. Complete show. And then in 2020, this is the one that I got. There's a remaster. So, you know, they sold out of the original title. So 2020, put it out again. Little remaster and done. And Collector's Music Reviews, I remember, did a review of this. They were a little uh, disappointed. And they said it sounds very similar, but this one sent, sounded a little thinner to them. So, sounds like the original 2018 Zodiac would be the way to go. Although this one, this one sounds great too. Every version I've ever heard sounds excellent, honestly. Even that download I had sounded great. So probably the best sounding Black Sabbath rarity, now that it's an official release too, would be this show in my opinion. You really can't get any better sound. And, and of course we did get this in Black Sabbath Sabotage Super Deluxe Edition, which I picked up probably coming up on two years ago and still haven't opened it up. <laughs> uh, I mean, as you can see, I'm, I got tons of shit to listen to at all times. Nothing new to me inside this box. The reviews I read on this are, are great. Everyone loves the sound of sab sabotage. And I've even saw comments that it's the best sounding Asbury Park too. So, you know, I probably have a little bit of, you know, problem because I just spent $50 on this double CD. A couple months before I knew that was coming out, or a couple weeks actually. So maybe Zodiac knew it was coming out, figured they'd do another edition before they were trumped by the official box set. But still cool to have, man. These things are always cool to have. You know, you get your chance to buy some of this stuff, you just get it. Live with the consequences later. I don't know. Pretty cool to have something like that. Asbury Park, mandatory title number six. All right, number seven. And number eight, they kind of come in one package, the way I'm going to point you anyway. Again, the Zodiac. This one's a triple CD. Pittsburgh, 1976 and 1978. Awesome package here with this one. Let's talk about the 76 show, Technical Ecstasy Tour. The Super Deluxe edition of that has the same nine songs that were on this bootleg. Now, you know, this was been out before. I had this multiple forms before this, downloaded and all that sort of thing. The versions though on the Super Deluxe Editions, the nine songs are the same, but their songs are out of order. I'm not sure why they would have done that. We're talking about the Technical Ecstasy box set. Not sure they would, why they would have switched the order up from the concert, but they did, all right? Nine songs, two solos. So at least on this bootleg, you get the songs in the proper order. So I like that. That's the 76 show. The Pittsburgh 78 show has not been released yet. I'm, I'm assuming this is going to come out when we get the Never Say Die box. And I'm until then, you know, this is what we got. So this double C, triple CD rather, has the 76 Pittsburgh, 78 Pittsburgh, and also in the back, disc three, you get the uh, basically the best of the biscuit used to be called. This is sort of Initially, there were only four songs from each of these shows that were out there in, in bootleg collector land, not the whole shows. And there was some urban legend about that being found in some college's, 
you know, film library or something. But probably not much use to most people. I mean, the same, the four songs from each show that are on disc three are in the main shows on discs one and discs two. So there's no new material there. But the people like me that only had the uh, British Biscuit, I think it was called, kind of cool that they threw that in there as a uh, sort of third disc, you know, so. Anyway, the single title knocks out your number seven and number eight mandatory shows on the bootleg market from Sabbath. Pittsburgh 76, Technical Ecstasy, and September of 78 for the Never Say Die Tour. But there you go. Great title by Zodiac once again. All right, lastly, final show to tell you is about probably my favorite bootleg to listen to by Sabbath the last dozen years or so probably 15 years ago. I originally only had it downloaded myself. FM broadcast soundboard quality. We're in Abilene, Texas, nearly the end of Ozzy's career with Sabbath, basically. December 7th, 1978. It's a little distorted, a little peeking out, but overall very listenable show. And it's a fantastic partial show here. You get Symptom of the Universe, Joined in Progress, Rock and Roll Doctor at the end fades out after one or two minutes, but six complete scorchers in the middle. And man, what a great friggin' show. It really is. This was the only bootleg of this that ever came out, as far as I know, at least on Silver Press. The label was called Aces High. came out in 2001. Now, this isn't the real thing. This is just I printed out the cover, downloaded this years ago. Oh, wait, actually, you know what? I got this cop. I did have it downloaded, but... This copy I got off of uh, I Offer, maybe. Made in Argentina, it says on there. And the cover looks pretty cool, but the back cover looks pretty cheesy. You can tell it really a uh, photocopy there. But, you know, you get the deal. Let's talk about the show, not this cheesy packaging I got. Forget about you, what you heard about Van Halen blowing their doors off. You know, even when I found out about the show, I took my good old time getting around to downloading it. You know, I read all these things, Van Halen, blew them away. And I'm figuring Ozzy's one of his last shows. Ozzy's going to be mailing it in. Wrong and wrong. All right. Sabbath kicks ass here. The Snowblind on here is one of my favorite live versions of it ever. Okay. War Pigs. All right. That song, I don't really think there were any great songs of that since, uh, versions of that since like the early 70s. That always just sounds okay and never blows your doors off. Never Say Dies on here. That's great having that. Song Black Sabbath, really strong performance of that. The only soundboard version of Shockwave from Never Say Dies on here. What a badass tune. And let me tell you, Ozzy's performance on here is awesome. He does not sound like someone who's almost done with this band. He sounds better than a lot of the other shows that we just talked about. He's really into it. The crowd's into it. I love it. He calls, calls the crowd his babies. I don't know. I just love this friggin' show. And Shockwave is such a great song. Now, when I got this bootleg, like I said, about a dozen years ago, let me throw this on and, you know, which one is Shockwave? I used to play Never Say Die and just play Side 1. I rarely put Side 2 on. So when I heard this version here, I'm like, man, I got to get back to Never Say Die and get to Side 2 because this song's incredible. And I've been into Never Say Die up to my neck, you know, for those 12 or 15 years. It's the album I play the most because I, man, Never Say Die's side two is awesome. Other than that stupid breakout, it's a great, great side. And the whole record is, is awesome, really is. I always loved side one. So this got me into side two and Never Say Die and love this thing. And just the overall energy, the band sounds great. Everything's heard nice, a little distortion, like I said, great performance. Ozzy sounds great. He does not sound like he's about to be done with this band at all. And the only shockwave on soundboard. And Never Say Die is no, not bad either. Sounds great too. So, really love that. Now, actually, I said this was the only copy out there. Only silver, for sure. But I did pick this up off of uh, RZ a year or two ago called Shocked Eyes. You do get a bonus track of Dave Walker singing Junior's Eyes. So rough, roughly about a year ago, early 78. That version's cool to have, you know, on a, at least a legit CD because I only had it downloaded prior to this. So 
Um, this was like a ten dollars, you know, CDR. So there is, it is still out there. I think RZ sold out of this right now. Man, I would love to find me a copy of that original Shockwave over Texas. I only saw it once on Discogs, and I thought, oh, there's a, it might have only been the one copy. I'm like, all right, it's on Discogs. It'll be on there again. It sold like a week or two later, 35 bucks or something. I don't even know, $40. That was the last time I saw it on there. And I even had a search, saved search on eBay. Got a message about a year ago. There's a version of it on eBay. Went over there, clicked the link on my email. It was already taken off of there. So, you know, not easy to track that down. I'm one, one of these days, I would love to get to that guy. Guys, that's your nine mandatory Sabbath bootlegs slash rarities, as some of these are now official. Most of them bootlegs. You know, cool to have the standalone, even if you have the Super Deluxe Edition in some cases. Also through a half dozen other notable releases out there. Guys, just Google search this stuff. They come up, the grays come up on Amazon and eBay, Etsy, bootlegs, whole bunch of labels out there. Uh, RZ, Lighthouse, Music Lover Japan, Kent Japan, Navy Blue, etc. Just remember guys, the chase is better than the catch. It really is. It's fun tracking this shit down. It's part of the game. And a wise man once said, if it's worth getting, it's worth keeping. So hang on to your bootlegs. All right. Um, ah, got a couple new titles to show you. Just got these a few days ago. Both Tony Martin products, believe it or not. But I think the last soundboard bootleg there is to be had by me anyway, or one of them. Black Sabbath, Definitive Chicago, 1995. Here we are in the Forbidden Tour, much maligned album. World Music Theater, Tinley Park, Chicago, or Tinley Park, Illinois, July 7th of 95. The only Martin album I have is the Eternal Idol. I don't have any of the others and I never heard them other than a couple of songs here and there. And this looks like a cool set list, and I'm kind of glad it's got a decent chunk of Tony Martin stuff on there, you know? Because a lot of these, when you get them, there's only one or two songs from Tony Martin. Three or four at best. I think there's a half dozen on here. So that should be cool. A lot of Sabbath classics on there, too. Double CD. And this one, now I've only heard this from YouTube, but man, the sound on here is amazing. This is one of the best sound of bootlegs I ever heard. Going by YouTube. Can only get better on your stereo. And a double DVD. Headless in Russia, 1989. An afternoon and evening show. Uh, in Moscow, I believe. Now, they don't, they don't have a date pinned down. They never did. They just have the whole... Looks like they played there for 10 days straight. November 19th to the 28th, 1989. So, Headless Cross Tour. And uh, only a couple of songs from the Martin era once again. But you know what? Uh, I have these on trading day DVDRs that are you know burned, no cover, and also now we get the legit cover and stuff. And they are pretty good shows, and the quality is excellent. Even my trading day stuff, excellent versions of these. And we'll explore this more later on, perhaps. Guys, next next up coming up, Ozzy's Bark at the Moon Rough Mix review. I'll follow the Sabbath updates up with a sabbath related review so we'll get into talking about the rough mix sort of brother to the uh, outtakes of bark the moon that we explored last summer here's the rough mix and not quite what i thought it was it's actually a cooler product than i remembered it being so we'll get to that next i know this was a long one can you see why i broke it up into three different mandatory bootleg segments man hey stella Great beer. Guys, I think that'll do it. I'm going to catch you all later.